and welcome to Lions in the Field. I'm James Cornell, and this is my co-host, Amy Trober. We are excited to bring you the latest news, notes, and future stories from our SAGU alumni and how they're impacting the world for the cause of Christ. Amy and I are both blessed to work in the alumni office where we interact with thousands of lions in the field who are trained to succeed in vocational and marketplace ministry right here at SAGU. We hope these shows keep you informed and connected to all the important highlights and stories that define the Southwestern family. Let's step up to the starting line with our first segment, SAGU Social, where our track and field team is leaving its mark at the 58th Annual National Championships and preparing for the next season. Sophomore Montrell Blacknell represented the SAGU Lions track and field team and finished 15th in the heptathlon, which is an excellent start for the SAGU team. Here's a look into their experiences and performance at the meet, plus what they are doing now to prepare for their next set of challenges. This weekend was one for the books for the SAGU men and women's track and field teams. They shattered school records left and right, setting top 10 all-time marks along the way. Best part? It's only the early part of the season, indicating just how strong both programs are. After such a strong outing, and to get a feel of how the season is starting, we sat down with Nicholas Henderson, one of our star track athletes, and asked him just how he feels things are going. Hello, my name is uh, Nicholas Henderson. I am a graduate student here, well, athlete, and this is my last and final season. I run the 400 hurdles, score 100 outdoor 4x1, and uh, this is my home right here. So I didn't make the finals my first year here in 60. I was hurting myself big time. I was telling myself that I wasn't worth it and I wasn't all that. Coach C, they cheered me up, and I got back, and it was outdoor season. I go 400 hurdles. That's my main event. They opened my eyes up more, not only for myself, but for our Lord and Savior. Congratulations to Nicholas as well, who hit the NAIAA standard in the 400 meter hurdles for the third straight year. He's currently ranked number one in the NAIA and off to an outstanding start. Not to be outdone, we also caught up with decathlon athlete Montrell Blacknall on how he thinks the start of his season is going. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Montrell Blacknall, man. Favorite decathlete at the school. It's my second year being a deck. When I first came in, I didn't really plan on being a deck. You know what I'm saying? It's 10 events. That's 100, went to hurdles, long jump, high jump, pole vault, discus. And it's like a lot of people, they don't really do those type of events. So like coming in and doing 10 events, it's different. But I've learned to like kind of have a love-hate relationship for it. For the most part, I love it. So, you know what I'm saying? It's always good competition. Uh, it always just gives me something like to push myself. I, I actually love the program, like coming in here. I went to uh, Ennis High School. Coach Cox, he a great help, you know what I'm saying? I can't complain about nothing. I just love you here. We'd also like to congratulate Montrell, who hit the NAIA standard in the decathlon for the second straight year. He is currently ranked number two in the NAIA. Some great SAGU athletes we have here. One more star athlete we had to talk to was Charles Pulliam III. My name is Charles Pulliam. Uh, I am a high hurdler here. I compete in the 110 hurdles. Uh, I'm originally from Houston, Texas. I just go back to Texas Relays. Uh, it was kind of hectic. There was a lot of hurdlers, really good competition. Uh, I actually ended up qualifying for the national meet. Uh, Oklahoma Baptist qualified uh, to go to the, uh, the outdoor national meet in Indiana. That's been really cool to experience. And uh, uh, Coach Cox, uh, I go way back with Coach Cox. I mean, uh, he's the reason why I'm here, really. Uh, and God has had his hands all over all over our situation. It's uh, been a real blessing to be out here with uh, this amazing group of guys. We'd also like to congratulate Charles who not only set a new record in the 110 meter hurdles, but he became the first high hurdler in school history to qualify for the NAIA National Outdoor Championships. Congratulations, Charles. All in all, it was a fantastic weekend for the track and field program, and the team is definitely coming into shape. With this kind of success so early on, the sky's the limit for what they can achieve in the future. Go Sagu! From the McCafferty Hall stage at SAGU to the bustling city of Branson, Missouri, 2013 graduate Melissa Todd has made a name for herself in the field of theater. In 2008, Melissa was double cast in a production nominated for a regional Emmy Award and won Broadway World's Best Supporting Actress in 2017 for her role in Smoke on the Mountain. After spending seven years living in the heart of the Ozarks 
as a professional actress, she returned to Texas two years ago to be with family and launch her own theater company in Midlothian, Texas. Melissa named it Heritage House Productions, and it's there where she continues to use her skills as a creative storyteller for audiences of all ages. Let's pull back the curtain and take a sneak peek into Melissa's latest show at Heritage House Productions called The Living Lord's Supper. My name is Melissa Pettis. Uh, when I went to Sagu, I was Melissa Todd, and my stage name is Melissa Janine. I graduated from Sagu in May 2013. So this May, just in a few weeks from now, it'll be 10 years since I graduated. My journey was really completely not planned. I had no plans to go to college. Um, I was actually touring with a theater company. My tour got sh cut short and I was sort of in this place of uncertainty what to do next. And so my parents were like, do you want to consider going to college somewhere? And I was like, no, I don't. One day my dad said, why don't we just go visit Sagu? It's close, you know, it's a Christian school. We had one connection, which happened to be Rob Price. My dad was playing tennis with him. Um, and uh, I was like, okay, I mean, I, I wasn't opposed to visiting, but I was like, I'm not going to college. So I went there and visited my with my dad. We went to chapel service. All I can tell you is that by the end of my tour there, God made it so clear that I was supposed to start taking classes there. They offered a communication arts degree, and so my focus was super like theater and performing. I've known since I was about eight years old, I knew that God had in my heart, put placed in my heart a calling to be a, an actress, to be a performer. It was never, never has been about the fame or money for me. It's been about bringing the light to the darkness. And the way that the Lord has specifically called me to do that is be light to the darkness in literally like a dark theater. And backstage is always dark. I worked in Branson professionally for six years up until 2020 when COVID hit. It shut down Branson, which is a tourist town. And there were some things going on here in Midlothian where my family is located. It just was a God thing for me to leave Branson and come here. Towards the end of 2020, we put on our first live show in this rental venue that they have that seats like 60 people. Ever since then, we've been putting on about two to three live shows a year. And here we are. April 2023, and we're putting on the Living Lord's Supper. It is such a neat opportunity to be in this show and work with Melissa. I, I came to an earlier show and I just offered to come and like sit out, set out chairs and do some practical things. And she's like, hey, would you like to be in this show? Um, every actor, every performer wants to be on stage, wants to be doing something. But the greatest part about this is actually doing something that brings glory to the Lord. Working with this show on the Living Lord's Supper has definitely been a fantastic experience. Melissa is definitely one of the most personal directors I've worked with before. You can tell just in the way that she directs and in the way that she wants the songs and the lines to play out, that she just really cares a lot about the intimate experience that the audience has with the show and making sure that everyone connects with it and everyone's really feeling the scene and really feeling the lines that are getting across. There's 
a handful of professors that impacted my life greatly. Um, specifically, um, Rob Price, specifically uh, Ursula Gutierrez, who's not there anymore. Um, the Alexanders, Dr. Alexander. Um, Miss Barbie Humphreys, I believe is her last name. She's in the admin. Um, that's just to name a few, but the professors really, really um, believed in me and supported me. And then my directors that I was working closely with really instilled the experience for me of going into the career of performing, getting to do a lot of work on stage and classes, the things that I was taught, um, even down to some of my English classes where we had to give speeches. I have some very dear friends still that I made through university. In fact, um, my closest friends are the ones that I had in theater, that we performed in theater there at SAGU. And I can mention about four or five of them that are professionally um, in the acting world, whether it be TV and film or stage. And so that is really, really cool and special to me. She's actually really good friends with my wife. And that's how I kind of got invited into it. And I actually didn't even know that I was going to be singing whenever I joined in on this cast. They brought it out of me and they've encouraged me and uh, I'm, I'm no longer as nervous as I was, and I just so happen to be a part of this family, but a lot of the members here are my family. I will say what has been really cool is being like 10 miles from the university that I graduated in, and now having this venue that is essentially our theater, Heritage House Productions in Midlothian, Texas. It's just very cool to a degree. I've kind of come full circle you know, starting at Sagu and Waxahachie, moving away, performing professionally. And then here I am back in good old Midlothian doing what I love and what I feel like I'm called to do, but also like sharing with the community that's right here. After the break, we will crawl back into the wilderness for our latest edition of King of the Jungle. Our hand-picked game contestants will face off against each other under the watchful eye of host Rob Price. Our previous winners, Dr. Clancy Hayes and James Lex, have ensured their spot in the finals. But who will be our third champion? Stay tuned to see three more participants try to claw their way to the championship round coming right up in episode four. We'll be right back. Well, hello, I'm Rob Price, and welcome back to King of the Jungle, a trivia game that seeks to find out who knows the most about Sagu and our own Waxahachie campus. And we've got three more contestants on the show today, one faculty member, a staff member, and one current student. Only one, though, will advance to the championship round on the episode four show, and we crown this season's King of the Jungle. The winner 
will take home a $50 gift card to Texas Roadhouse. Let's go. In our last match, episode two, staff member James Lex from Media Services emerged out of the jungle victorious. He's moved on at the championship round alongside Dr. Clancy Hayes, who won in episode one. Now let's meet our last set of challengers, shall we? Let's begin on our left with our staff member. Go ahead, introduce yourself, please. Beverly Robinson, Director of Career Development. Awesome, and in the middle we have? I'm Annalise, I'm a freshman. Freshman student or freshman student. faculty member? Student. <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> I know, okay. And our far right? Meredith Jones, Director of SAGU Worship. Awesome, okay, ladies, here's how it's gonna work. You've got seven trivia questions all about SAGU in some fashion or manner. There'll be four options, A, B, C, or D. Use the boards, write the letter, flip it around when I call for it, and we'll add them up after seven games of play. We'll see who's on top. If it's a tiebreaker, we have a few more questions to ask you. If that's a tiebreaker, we're gonna do Rochambeau. Is that okay? Rock, paper, scissors, you got that? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. All right, let's begin with our first question of Lions in the Fields version of King of the Jungle. Here we go, question number one. Ooh, how many buildings have been constructed under President Bridges? Is it A, three, B, four, C, five, or D, two? Lock in your answers. Three, four, five, or two by your letter. Let's flip it around. What you got, Miss Bev? She's got B, and Elise, A, Meredith, A. Okay, the answer is C. Oh. They all <laughs> missed it. Swing and a miss, it's Schaefer, Bridges, Teeter, Wellness Center, and our uh, very own Hagee Communications oh, Center. Schaefer. Schaefer. Yeah. Didn't, Did not, Schaefer. didn't count Schaefer. Yes. I thought that was Dr. No Prince. one got it right. Question number two, here we go. Let's get on the board now with this one. Number two. Oh, when did Judah the lion become our mascot? Was it A, 1927, B, 1945, C, 1963, or D, 1980, when Judah became the official mascot. Lock in your answer by your letter. And let's see what you got, Miss Bev, who do you got? She selected C, Annalise, A, and Meredith, D. Three different answers. The correct answer is? It is oh, C. That would be Miss so Bev is on the board with one. Okay, question number three, quickly, here we go. We've got this one. Oh, it's a picture. Who is this? Taken from a SAGU yearbook, is it A, President Bridges, is it B, P.C. Nelson, is it D, Dr. Hayes, or D, Dr. Langston? Two of our current professors in C and D, President Bridges or our founder. Go ahead, Bev, who you got there? Who's your first answer? You got D and Elise, D and D. They all chose Dr. Langston. Is that correct? Survey says, yes, of course, Dr. Langston. That was pretty easy. You can tell by that picture it's Dr. Langston. Question number four. Which of these is not one of the seven SAGU core values? Is it A, academic excellence? Is it B, servant leadership? Is it C, respect and integrity? Or D, Pentecostal distinction? Lock in your answers. We have seven core values at SAGU. One of those is not it. All right, Bev, what do you have? She chose C, and Elise chose C, and Meredith also chose C. I think the answer is C. Let's take a look and see we've got yeah, that's right. Now, we do have respect and integrity around here. <laughs> it's just not one of our listed core values, people. We like integrity here. It's okay. A look at our scores now. We've got Bev with three, Annalise with two, and Meredith with also two. As we move into question number five, here we go. What is the last line of our alma mater? Is it A, to unite or to stand united around the throne? Is it B, I'll remember you? Is it C, I spent with you, or D, and gave my life anew? We sing at every commencement, graduation ceremony. We all sing the alma mater. What's the last line, Bev, what'd you say? You said A, and Elise, D, and Meredith, A. The answer is, it's gotta be A. We oh, all I'm sing it all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm so one. sorry. You're I haven't sing it all the time. You don't time. know yeah, this song. You're that. four years away from even knowing the song. I know. That was not a fair question. <laughs> I've never That's been to a horrible. Who can know these questions? <laughs> Become a cheerleader, you'll learn it. Okay. <laughs> it was A to stand united around the throne. Okay, we have question number six coming up. Our score, Bev with four, Annalise with two, 
and Meredith with three. Here we go. Which Here of these so, which of these is not a Sagu worship song? Yeah. Meredith, you better get this one right. I know this one. It's A, in all the earth, B, reigning still, C, never be the same, or D, you are here. One of those is not the title of a Sagu worship song. Lock in your answers. Meredith, uh, let's begin with you this time. Meredith, we got D, Annalise, D, Bev. She chose C. <laughs> I was good. The <laughs> correct answer is... <laughs> Meredith is correct. Hey, you better hey, got that one right. It's D. <laughs> you are here is not a saga worship song. He is here on campus. This right. is not a song yet. That's, a, that's right. Write the song for us. Maybe she it should be. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it should be a song. <laughs> We're down to the last question. A look at the scores. Here we go. Bev with four. Annalise with three. And Meredith with also four. It's tied going into the last round. Annalise, you get it right. They get it wrong. It's a three-way tie. Let's go. <laughs> question number seven. What is the oldest building on campus? Is it the A, administration building? Is it B, Collins Hall? Is it C, Claxton or D, Davis building? I missed this one in, in the, 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 the pre-production meeting. I blew this one. Shame on me. Maybe you'll get it right. All right, let's begin first with Annalise in the middle. You chose A, Bev. You chose A, also administration building. And Meredith also chose A, the answer is hey. A, administration <laughs> building. I thought it was going to be a trick. So I think our I final tabulation is going to be five for Bev, four for Annalise. Sorry about the whole alma mater question stump. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> and then Meredith, you also got five. So those two advance to our tiebreaker round. So you can put your uh, whiteboard down, Annalise, and watch along as Bev and Meredith vie for this championship round to maybe win a $50 gift card on the next show of Lions in the Field. Here we go, tiebreaker number one says this. Oh, oh it's another that's picture. That's an easy one. It's a picture. Who is this? Is it A, P.C. Nelson? Is it B, Dr. Reynolds? Is it C, President Bridges? Or D, Dr. Owens B? Bev, who do you got? You chose B, Dr. Reynolds. Meredith chose B, Dr. Reynolds. I think that's correct, survey says. I should say, answer says, Dr. <laughs> Reynolds. This is not a survey. Okay, tiebreaker number two. If this ends up in a tie, we're going Rochambeau. We're going to go rock, <laughs> paper, scissors, okay? Here we go. Question number two of the tiebreaker round says this. When did Sagu start offering distance education? Good question. Was it A, 2003? Was it B, 2015? C, 1990? Or was it back in 1983, letter D? Think about it. Bev and Meredith, lock in your answers. Begin with Meredith, what'd you choose? You chose C, 1990, and you also chose C, 1990. I think they're both wrong. I think the correct answer is D, oh. 1983. <laughs> Which means Same. put the whiteboards down. It's oh, time no. for another round of Rochambeau. Okay, here we go. We're going to say, I'll say three, two, one, shoot. Either give me the old paper, the rock, or the scissors. Got it. That may determine the winner. Here we go. Three, two, one, shoot. They both did paper. Again, three, two, one, shoot. Oh, oh we got the rock, crush, and scissors, which means Meredith Jones oh, no, has advanced on win. to the championship <laughs> round alongside Dr. Clancy Hayes oh, no. and also <laughs> James Lex. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's like, thank you, I think. So awesome. Very good. Thank you so much. Good job, Meredith. Thank you for playing along. And Elise and Bev, good job to all three of you. Thank you so much once again. Appreciate that. After the break, we'll look back at this year's campus days and step into the shoes of prospective students. Plus, Dr. Donna Otwell returns with more sensational stories of her days as a professor in our Legacy Lions interview. Don't stop watching that link. We'll be right back. Here we go. It starts here. Scene A9. Scene A7. Here, scene A21, take one. When you were a student here, how would you describe your overall experience in the education department? So I would say that my experience here at SAGU through education was incredible. However, the experience I've had after SAGU 
with those relationships that I've had with the professors and the people has been even more incredible. Being able to put it in action and still have relations with those professors and still be able to call and say, hey, that has also been life-changing. What do you find most fulfilling as an educator For me, it's about that late night phone call or text message from a, a student that is in their first or second year of teaching now. It's, it's those moments when they're like, I just did my first evaluation, and because of the experience I had in the SAGU teacher ed department, I got accomplished. I was actually really sold on a different college, but whenever I walked into the chapel service, I was just in awe of the community and the sense of the Holy Spirit that I felt there. Whenever I'm teaching a course, one of the things I ask myself is, how does this course look different here than it does at the State University or this program? And I really try to make sure that my students understand that they have to view things with a biblical perspective and a biblical lens in all circumstances and situations. And that that's very different from any other class or program that we go through. I believe that every child has value and purpose, and I think oftentimes in the world that gets neglected. However, when they find their value and purpose in Christ, it's foundational. And so being able to get a degree where I can not only teach a child in the academic setting, but I also can instill something powerful within them. I could give them a hope that would last greater than today, a hope that would last for tomorrow, and a hope that would be transformational in their life. Education, Education starts, starts here. here. Training starts here. Community starts here. Kappa's Days has been a staple event on Southwestern's annual calendar for decades. It's when hundreds of prospective students have an opportunity to explore the campus at no cost to them. All of our organization's combined efforts create an experience that simulates the daily life of current students. This overnight stay filled with chapel, classes, dorm rooms, and exciting events creates a welcoming atmosphere. Here is their response to this amazing opportunity. Have you ever wondered what it's like for high school students to experience SAGU for the first time? We'll wonder no more. As a former student of Southwestern Assemblies of God University, you know what it's like to be part of the SAGU community. During campus days, different professors and program coordinators gather in the Schaefer Center to allow students the opportunity to explore different paths. Campus days is the perfect opportunity for prospective students to see what SAGU has to offer. During this unique event, high school students have the chance to stay overnight in our dorms, attend classes, and even hang out at the block party. They get a first-hand look at what life on campus is really like. I just love the atmosphere and just, you know, being able to be with a lot of other students that also have the same principles and goals. But that's not all. They also have a chance to experience late night worship and so much more. If you know what it's like to be part of the SAGU community, then you've experienced the camaraderie, the faith-based education, and the excitement of college life. I just kind of enjoy, you know, like the community. You get to, current students get to find like, you know, upcoming students to kind of meet and talk to. All the upcoming students get to meet each other and find people that are also coming to SAGU. And it just kind of helped build that sense of community that we get. As an alumni, you know the value of SAGU education and you can help us spread the word about campus days. Dr. Paula Manley used to be one of my students. And now she's a doctor. Well. Right, and so <laughs> look at all the grand possibilities that could take place. Right? And I, I made it to doctor because you were my professor. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> and, and nobody believed that. Not one person. Campus Days is an experience you won't want to miss. So register now and get ready for an unforgettable weekend. It's time now to take a look back at the life and service of a SAGU legend. In this third installment of our Legacy Lion segment, Dr. Adana Altwell shares more about the amazing impact she has had on the Southwestern campus. In this part of her conversation with our own Dr. Danny Alexander, she describes the power of prayer when one day many years ago, an unexpected spiritual encounter unfolded in her class. Well, obviously you have integrated 
scriptures in all of your classes that you have taught here at Southwestern. There are two courses, though, that I know from a personal standpoint that you have a dear uh, relationship with, and that will be biblical prayer and the person and work of the Holy Spirit. These two are special courses to you. And time will not allow us to have all of the examples of what has taken place in those classes. But could you give us a couple of examples of what has taken place in those two classes during the years? It may be earlier or of recent, but give us a couple of examples. Okay. Um, the Bible, the God breathed word, that's, that's my life. And uh, you, Dr. Alexander, are the one who asked me if I would like to teach a Bible class. And so it was a desire of my heart to do that for a long time. And so uh, you told me how, to, how many postdoctoral seminary hours that I needed, so I got those. So when the a College of Bible and Church Ministry asked me to teach person and work of the Holy Spirit, I responded with a joyful yes. We need the Holy Spirit emphasis to be prime at SAGU. Pentecost has made us who we are, and Pentecost must maintain us. So a couple of examples, um, like on, for the prayer class. One day, a, a boy said he would have to quit school over the weekend if he did not get $6,000 that weekend to pay off his school bill. So we prayed. And on Tuesday, he walked in and said his science teacher from high school came by his house over the weekend. He was, his teacher was casually looking around the house, and he spotted an old animal tooth that had been lying around the house for years. The teacher inspected it and offered the student $6,000 mm. for it. The student said sold. <laughs> and he brought the money back to school and paid off his school bill. And um, one day, more occasions than one day, the Spirit of God came down while we were opening the class in prayer. And uh, I remember we had just been in a missions chapel. The Spirit of God just hit in the classroom. And... Uh, a student began to get in the spirit and I let it go and a roar of concerted prayer went up and suddenly I knew I was not in charge of the class. The Holy Spirit was having his way. Students got up, they started walking around praying. Then the slaying power of the Holy Ghost came. A number of students fell under God's power. Nobody was pushing them down. I was walking around students on the floor praising God in the big middle of it. No more teacher student categories there. The ground was level under the cross. And I think I called President Bridges' office and told them what was happening if anyone wanted to stop in and get a glimpse. And we never left the room until later in the mm -hmm. afternoon. We started, I think, at about 9.30 that morning. Now, my wife, Dr. Amy Alexander, and I have known you for many, many years. Known you not only from a professional standpoint, but from a personal standpoint. And so we have developed this long time friendship, family ship, in fact, and we've been blessed so much by that relationship. So I know this from a personal standpoint that when you minister and when you speak and preach, there is, Dr. Otwell, a significant holy boldness that becomes evident in your personality. And I know that by nature, you consider yourself to be more of a reserved individual. So there is this dynamic that takes place. In fact, I know the lights right here make you feel probably a little bit more out of your element here, but you're doing fine. So can you explain to me what is it that causes you to change from a more reserved individual to one of spirit boldness when you are ministering? Well, yes, by nature I am reticent and have been intentional in SAGU in life to neither exercise I, my, my, I myself in matters too great for me. However, uh, the scripture says, but you shall receive power. That means the inclusion of boldness. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So if you think you observe a more reserved personality in my everyday life, when I get in the pulpit, all I can attribute this to is the Holy Ghost comes upon the weaker vessel. 
and the lion of the tribe of Judah rises up in anyone having such an experience to present the word of God with unflinching spirit enabling boldness. Mm -hmm. Fasting and prayer fuels this dynamic even more. But this is the only way I can explain said observation. The spirit of God comes upon you and you receive boldness. And you sense that spirit, obviously, when you're in the pulpit. I feel it right now. Yes, okay. Praise That's wonderful. Great. Mm -hmm. That's all for this episode of Lions in the Field. Amy, it's been an enjoyable show. And how about Meredith? I know. You know, Meredith and I go way back. We were students together and sang in the harvesters and everything together once. Awesome. Well, she didn't think she was going to do so well, but she's going into the finals. That's awesome. She's one smart cookie. I like her. <laughs> On behalf of our team of student producers from the Digital Media Arts Program and our executive producers, Rick Bowles and Rob Price, thanks again for watching. And remember, for every sagu lion in the field, your story starts here.